you'd be lucky if you're going to get two minutes from me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what would you like to know? Well, tell us a bit about Faces and Places and what uh, the sort of background of how Faces and Places came about. Okay. Well, Birmingham in the late 19th century wants to see itself as a progressive new civic space of enterprise um, and entrepreneurial growth. So if you, if you think about in the 1870s you've had Chamberlain's Streets Improvement Acts where the kind of physical space of Birmingham was being transformed. Um, that's had a major effect on how the city is seen. Um, Chamberlain's seen as a very kind of radical progressive force. By 1889 Birmingham becomes officially designated as a city status. So after this point, you know, there's a, there's a real need in Birmingham to kind of show to the rest of the world the kinds of individuals, the kind of developments that are happening in, in, in the city that's progressive. You know, who are the people who are making new inventions? Who are the people that are important to the kind of civic development of the city? So I think it's this kind of niche that Birmingham faces and places is fulfilling. I mean, Birmingham's always had that need from the 18th century onwards to be seen as a progressive place. You think of the great industrialists in Birmingham. And it's certainly what's happening at the moment. Um, exactly. It's trying to portray itself as the um, second city. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So in the 1890s, um, the publishers of, of this um, kind of l journal, if you like, of, of local dignitaries um, that they call Faces and Places, is responding to this this need to kind of showcase the high achievers of Birmingham. So it's very much about um, the kind of elite campaigners, um, politicians, the civic dignitaries, the philanthropists, the merchants, the people who have perhaps rose from the middle class to achieving a high level of, of, of social reputation, um, perhaps people who have become renowned through service in the army and, and, and other stories that, that perhaps um, you know you wouldn't expect to see in there such as the story of um, Reverend Peter Thomas Stanford who was born into slavery in the American South who I think is the, the only person um, in places and places who has a black uh, cultural identity who, who's kind of part of the places and places production so there's all kinds of, all kinds of stories that are there I think there was four or five volumes that were produced in the 1890s. So although it's not a fully comprehensive uh, list of um, you know, the people who were important in Birmingham at the time, it gives you this sort of interesting cross-section of those who have influenced social influence.